What's up, everybody? James Duggan here with IGN at BlizzCon 2017. Joining me is Tim Ford, lead gameplay engineer, to talk about some of the viewability and spectator changes coming to Overwatch uh, in preparation for Overwatch League and esports in general. Now, the first question I have about that is the smart camera. Why is it important and what makes it smart? Yeah, smart camera is really important because we're dealing with a game that honestly has some inherent chaos around it, right? If you are if you're watching a Genji pull out their Dragon Blade to go dice the enemy team to bits, an actual professional player is operating at a different level of perception than a normal human being can operate. If you stick the camera in their first person perspective, you're going to be a lot of very rapid, you know, camera changes that might make your average human being vomit. So the smart camera does a great job of framing the action in a way that's much easier to understand what's what's going on. And the way the smarts work is it can look at all the different potential uh, things that the camera could frame, predominantly the enemies of the person you're currently observing, and figure out who's the most important one based on their threat, their position, whether you can see them. And it uses that information to constantly keep in frame the set of things that we think you should see as that action plays out. Tell me from a readability perspective and also just a coolness perspective why team uniforms are such a big deal. Uh, well, that's it. I think you answered the question right there. Right? <laughs> hey, we, we started, we looked at that problem as a readability problem, right? first and foremost. We realized after watching a lot of competitive Overwatch and watching the World Cup last year that um, it, you can feel it yourself. If you play a lot of Overwatch and you watch like the old team color rules we had before, whenever we observed the red team and saw one of their red teammates go by, your, your reptilian brain was like, kill that guy! Oh no, he's on your team. <laughs> right, so we knew there was an obstacle that we had to overcome. So we thought, well, let's do something to, with the team colors. But we eventually moved towards was this whole notion of, well, wouldn't it be rad if they actually had full uniforms? Not just team colors, but full on uniforms. And wouldn't it be cool to actually reskin all of the effects in games so you understand exactly which Graviton Surge that came from? Was that you know, South Korea or was that USA? Um, and we just, we, the more we looked at it, the more we realized this isn't just a readability thing. This is a cool thing. And there's something really magical about watching your home team wearing their team uniform and what, that, what connection that brings to you. So I think Overwatch League at a high level uh, at some point is about making it a little bit more conventional in terms of a sports feel. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, bullet points of any good sport broadcast is instant replays. Yes. Uh, and this is something that you needed in Overwatch. Tell me how you accomplished that. Yeah, well, we had a bunch of technology already for kill cam, play of the game. That all leverages our ability to choose a point in time in the match and replay from there. Um, the enhancements that we added for the viewer experience were to allow our observers, those are the folks actually controlling where the cameras go in the game, to choose at will what moments in time they want to replay. And then as they play them back, they can scrub time, slow time, pause time, position the camera wherever they want to show that action. And it's done in a consumable way. If you watch some of these matches, there's hundreds of like important events that happen throughout the entire game, what we call like the combat log. That's people dying, points getting captured, you know, actual events occurring. And we make that consumable to the observers so they can choose that triple kill that, that Tracer got on some amazing pulse bomb. Go back in time, choose that as a replay, and then they can show that particular moment from multiple perspectives, do cool stuff with the camera, do cool stuff with time to make it it's as like slow-mo everything. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, aside from CSGO and Quake, which are first-person shooters, a lot of esports uh, happen from an isometric viewpoint, which is a top-down, whether it be an RTS mm -hmm. or a MOBA like League of Legends or Heroes of the Storm, what have you. It's a very pleasant viewer experience uh, because you can understand exactly where everybody is and what's going on, and I understand you want to bring that functionality to the broadcaster and the yeah. person controlling things. Tell me about that. That's right, yeah. It's something we, we debuted at the World Cup this year, this top-down view. Um, and it's iconographic in nature, so it gives you a top-down view of the map and puts icons over the individual heroes. Obviously, the game is designed to be this first-person action game. It's not designed to be viewed top down. So the iconography is really important to really understand that that's Tracer, that's Farah, that's Mercy. We can push that even further because we have that, that abstract relief of the icon in order to show things like this is Winston doing Primal Rage right now. We actually switched our icon out so you understand. We have this, these cool little health bars around each of the characters. We draw lines whenever someone's dealing damage to somebody else. So we can, we can leverage that iconography to really build a language around what's actually happening at a high level. And I think it's, it's been really successful, not just for the viewer experience, but also for the casters themselves. They actually have, the observers and the, the shoutcasters actually see that view the entire time while they're calling the game. And they, they have that kind of omniscient view that allows them to understand when plays are developing and what they can call out. So when I think about esports, I think conventionally, uh, and League of Legends is kind of my basis here, but when I think about Voiboy, I think about him playing a particular champion in League of Legends. Now, Overwatch has an interesting issue where, um, from a gameplay standpoint, you need to be able to change between heroes in the same match. So how do you keep that readable to the yeah. viewer? Yeah, that's a good call. Um, I think 
there's a lot of other layers. This is, these are things that we're exploring and hopefully we'll see a little bit more with Overwatch League. There's other layers outside of the game where you can still make that connection between like a star player and the set of heroes that they play. I mean, you're always gonna have folks who, who like, you know, a Seagull might play an amazing Farah and you might always make that association when, when he's playing with Dallas. There, there's gonna be things we're gonna have to do in order to really uh, make it clear to the, the viewer that the, he the, the star they're watching play plays this plethora of heroes mm. um, and that uh, I think stats is going to be a big factor there if you think of the whole notion of like like your Bo Jacksons or like your, your Iron Man baseball players mm -hmm. in the National League who can actually hit and pitch like they they play multiple roles if you think of the baseball card fantasy there I think when, pe when people engage with those superstars they're going to think about what they can do as a flex support and as a flex DPS and what sure. they can do as a flex tank and uh, the stats will really tell that story a lot better. So my final question to you is uh, for the folks at home who want to use these tools, whether it's in their own private tournaments or just to make cool content. Mm -hmm. like I would love using some of those tools just to make fun videos. Yeah, yeah. Is that something they'll have access to? Uh, we have no plans to announce just yet, but certainly the fact that th this is our first step to get that technology booted up and consumable by human beings. Like, so sure. the, like, it isn't, it isn't, <laughs> the game developers aren't the ones using these tools right now. We're coaching our observers and our spectators and the analyst desks to use these tools. The next step, of course, is to figure out a way to get those tools in the hands of our players. Um, Wonderful. And there's, there's a lot of work to be done there, but it's something we're really passionate about. I mean, you, you nailed it on the head. Like mm. our, our players can make cool content with these tools. Of course, we have to give it to them in some capacity, but that's something we have to work out. Sure, absolutely. Tim, thank you so much for giving us a look behind the curtain at the viewability and spectator tools coming to Overwatch and Overwatch League for all things Overwatch and esports. You're already in the right place at IGN. Thank you.